This is a bit of biology with Mr. Ruck. Today we are going to be talking about mitosis and cell cloning. What mitosis essentially is, it is cell division that results in two genetically identical daughter cells. So it is ideally cloning. You're taking one cell and from that one cell, you're going to make two cells that are genetically identical. The one cell that you start off with is called a parent cell. And mitosis happens, you divide and you clone. And then what you get at the end is the daughter cells. And there's two of them in the image below. Um, the reason why I have 46 in here is because in humans, we have 46 chromosomes. And what I'm trying to say here is 46 chromosomes in the beginning. And in the end, there's two cells also with 46 chromosomes because these cells at the end are the exact same as the one in the beginning. So some good questions I have for you. One, well, the first, let's start with why do we need mitosis? Why do your cells need to divide? Okay, so I have some funny images here below. First, most obvious reason is growth and development. You started out at one point in your life as only one cell big. And then after fertilization, you continue to grow inside your mother's stomach. Then you were birthed, you were a baby for a long time, and then you were still maybe growing and developing. And right now we estimate the average human is made up of 40 trillion cells. So you started out one and you got to 40 trillion. How did we get there? We got there through cell division, which is mitosis. Maintaining your body. So in order to maintain your body and do everything you want to do, your cells are constantly dying. We need to replace those cells. So we do cell division. We do cell cloning in order to replace those cells. And healing your body. If you've ever had a scratch on your skin or you cut out, cut off your hair or you rip, like rip out your hair, whatever, your, your body responds when it's wounded. So if you have a cut, your skin heals back and it's able to do that through mitosis. Three new terms I need to explain and then I'm uh, then I'll start describing how mitosis happens, but three terms that you might not have heard of before. Number one is going to be somatic cell. Mitosis happens to somatic cells and somatic cells are any cell in the body besides sex cells. So besides a sperm or an egg, all cells besides that. So examples of this muscle cell, nerve cells, hair cells, skin cells. All of these are somatic. They are also diploid. So that's in there for the definition. Next question would be, what does diploid mean? Diploid is a cell with two sets of chromosomes. So once again, besides your sex cells, all of your cells in your body have two sets of chromosomes. So that's 23 pairs. And I want you to kind of think of this like shoes. You have 23 pairs of shoes, but overall you have 46 shoes if you count each individual sneaker. So 23 shoes from your mom, 23 shoes from your dad, they all come together to make pairs, which gives you a total of 46. So diploid is something that has two sets of chromosomes. One set's from your mom, one set's from your dad. And finally, this term chromosome here down at the bottom, Chromosomes, it's just a form of DNA, and this is where genetic information is stored. So DNA can be stored in either chromosomes or chromatin. I'll explain that more here in a second. On to the explanation of how mitosis happens. Mitosis is going to happen in four major steps. And an acronym that we use is PMAT. So it goes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. I'm going to describe each of these phases and I'll also give you some pictures. But first we have to do the prologue. The uh, prologue is something that happens before the story. So the prologue here is interphase. Interphase is not a step of mitosis. So it happens before mitosis. So that's why I'm calling it a prologue. It's a different story, but it happens before cell division begins. So what happened before mitosis? Interphase. Things that happen during interphase are the DNA is replicated. So if you want to divide your cells and make sure they're the exact same, you need to make sure that there's double the amount of DNA. So when you pull them apart, each one has 46 chromosomes. 
DNA is still in the form of chromatin. What that means is there's two forms of DNA. There's chromatin, and that's these sloppy lines here, and there's also chromosomes. The chromosomes look like the X's. Cetrioles are formed. Uh, there's the picture pointing to it. If you're watching this with the notes packet, I would like you to label the picture, chromatin, centrioles, and nucleus. Centrioles are little proteins, and they're going to be used to pull the chromosomes apart. I'll explain that more in a second. Mitosis's acronym is PMAT. Prophase is the first step. So the steps or the things that happen in prophase are the nucleus disintegrates. So in order for the cell to divide, we can't have a nucleus. Number two, we are going to need to turn the sloppy DNA. Uh, chromatin is very, it's not organized well. We need to turn that into organized chromosomes. So the chromatin is going to turn into chromosomes. And you see that here in the picture with the nice X's. And then finally, the spindles start to form. And I'll explain what spindles are with the next step. Metaphase is the next step. And the way it, it's kind of a cheesy analogy, but the way I want you to think about centrioles, which are the proteins on the end, and spindles is I want you to think about like the cowboy with their lasso or with their rope. So the centrioles are the cowboy and the rope is the spindles. So there's two cowboys on the end. They are going to throw their rope around the chromosomes. They're going to throw their rope around the central mirror, central mirror, which is the center of the chromosome. Sorry, I forgot that. So they're going to throw the rope around the central mirror, and then they're going to pull on these chromosomes until they break apart. So metaphase is when spindles attach to the chromosomes, the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, and the spindles begin to pull on the chromosomes. They line up in the middle because we want the chromosomes to divide evenly. Anaphase is the next step. There's a term here, sister chromatid. The sister chromatid is when the chromosome is pulled apart. So when you pull apart the chromosome, pulling from each side, each cowboy, each centriole on the end has its spindles, and it's pulling, it's pulling, and finally the chromosome is going to break and it's going to break into two separate chromatids. So please continue to label on your drawing if you have the notes packet. These are two sister chromatids here, and they were pulled apart from each other. They used to be an X, now they're pulled apart. Also, this is the shortest phase in mitosis. Acronym is PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, uh, and then finally telophase. Telophase is when you really start to see two different cells form at the end. So you can see the shape of the cells begin to take place. Uh, and it kind of always looks similar to maybe an eight, the outlining of an eight, because you see two different circles forming. Big things that happen here is the nucleus is going to reform around the DNA. So the nucleus is going to show back up and it's going to surround the chromosomes. So the DNA is going to be trapped in there. And then uh, the big thing, the reason why we did this is the formation of two new cells. Finally, we had a prologue. We also need an epilogue. Uh, epilogue comes at the end of the story. The epilogue here is cytokinesis. Big things would be a crease forms down the middle. So it's completely cut in half. So two, we now have two new cells. They are, these cells are somatic. And they, these cells are going to start from square one. So it's just a nice cycle that they go through. They're going to start back again with interphase. So there's four steps to mitosis. Once again, interphase is not one, neither is cytokinesis. So this is not a step of mitosis, but it comes after telophase. Final walkways here should be, after watching this video, you should be able to explain and tell me how and why, the hows and the whys of mitosis. So you should be able to tell me how mitosis happens, the steps that we need, and then also why, as living organisms, we need to do mitosis. This has been a bit of biology with Mr. Rock. I'm signing off.